Montpelier Pride. Thank you, all you gorgeous people, for coming out for Montpelier Pride. What is up? Happy Saturday. My name's Kel. I'm one of the co-organizers. We have uh, all sorts of events just sort of freestyle forming around the lawn. We've got the brass band is about to start us up, Brass Balligan. And then we're going to do, for whoever wants to, a sidewalk parade around town. We're going to flash mob that 15 second flashing light at the Bear Pond intersection. So if you want to parade with us after the brass band, come on up here into the corner. We're going to exit the back and then we will come back in the front side on our return. And then we've got a bunch of music, a great show lined up. We've got a bunch of wellness tablers over in the corner, some acupuncture and all sorts of great stuff. So thank you so much for coming out. We'll keep doing announcements and happy pride. Woo!
second traffic light by Bear Pond, and then we're gonna parade back into the fest. There's lots of wellness and happenings and chill stuff happening here, but if you wanna parade with us, come up here, we're gathering, we're leaving in five minutes. And then next up we have Lavendula playing some more music in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Clap once if you can hear me. Clap twice if you can hear me. This is the last call for the parade! <laughs> I see my Safer Space team sauntering in their boas. All you beautiful outfits out here. Happy Pride Month, Yulia!
Again, we are Lavendula. We're so stoked to be sharing space with you. Happy Pride.
Thank you. That song is about reproductive freedom. Yay! For everyone that has a uterus, not just women. It's like for people. We should just have it. <laughs> Fun idea. Just having it. Just having it. What should we do now? I would love to. I think so. This next song is to commemorate all of our friends and siblings in the queer community, in the BIPOC community, in the sex worker community who aren't here with us anymore. It's really, really important um, to source our grief and our joy and our rage when we make spaces in events like Pride. And I'm going to put two names out there who I'm remembering today. I remember Fern, and I remember my friend Jade. And this song is called Give Up the Ghost.
Just a few more songs. So happy to be here. The song's called Don't Believe.
song for you? Yeah. Do you have CDs for sale? Not on our person. Yes, but they're not here. <laughs> you can find us on Spotify and... We're on the internet. You can find us on the internet and on Bandcamp if you want to be more ethical about it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Right. We are so excited to have been here for Pride, and we've got, you know, wonderful other musicians and poets up on the docket. Two Sox State Naked Street is coming up. Marie Hamilton is coming up. And it is going to, it's just so great to be able to be here as musicians, as artists, in a queer space. And frickin' shine, y'all! Woo! This, ne this next song is about erotic labor, which is a legitimate form of labor, and an industry in which trans people are disproportionately targeted for incarceration and death. Sex workers work, y'all. Happy Pride.
Toussaint Saint Negritude giving us some poetry, and we have the Mount Abe a cappella sweet transition group coming at four. We've got lots of games. We have so many amazing sponsors, including Fox Market and Red Hen, Mosaic, the ACLU. The city has really turned out and supported this fast, so we're psyched to keep doing this. We love this. some poetry on this beautiful day. The rain is stopping, the sun is coming back out, and you know there's a rainbow coming. Yeah! Okay? Maybe the rainbow is here already. Okay? All right. This poem I'm gonna do is called All This Grace. And this poem is dedicated to a dear friend, Fern Feather. I'm so sorry. I know you'd love to hate me. But much to your chagrin, my humanity is just much too much for even you to withstand. I know you'd love to detest my face but much to your own wretchedly vile disgrace. My bad-ass beauty, my bad-ass beauty just keeps shining with every last look you take. I know, sorry for the buzzing again. Just making some adjustments here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start this poem again. Thank you. You know, I'm so used to hearing things buzzing around. I just thought it was part of it. So this is called All This Grace. I'm so sorry, I know you'd love to hate me, but much to your chagrin, my humanity is just much too much for even you to withstand. I know you'd love to detest my face, but much to your own wretchedly vile disgrace, my badass beauty, my badass beauty, my badass beauty just keeps shining with every last look you take. I know, I know, how could God create all this grace? Step aside, little world. I'm about to light this goodness from here to outer space. Gold don't spoil for nobody. Gold don't spoil for nobody, no matter what they say. Wow. 
And just remember that, that you have gold, all of us. We're all gold. And gold doesn't spoil. You know, gold has been found under the ocean for hundreds of thousands of years. It's completely untarnished, completely shiny and gold. So remember that, gold don't spoil for nobody. Okay. All right, go to another one. And now that I've taken my shirt off to all that good music, the mosquitoes are all over me. Uh, so I'm gonna do a poem here that was published in the Times Argus uh, last uh, September. It's called Through the Wilderness. Through the Wilderness. Through the wilderness of my freedom, through territories uncharted for corporate consumption, through cogent dreams and cosmic streams, I have climbed to find my star house, high amongst the peaks of an ever emancipating consciousness. Through these constellations, strewn within my soul, here I have climbed to find my sanctuary, housing all the juju this new day can hold. Through these clouded, I'm sorry, through days clouded in the valleys of self-deceit, through the darkest immobility of shackling bigotries, through hours journey by prayer and by hand and by feet, through hell and high water indignities, dangling inequities for the hungriest to eat, through powers stronger than all the calls for my defeat, I have climbed to find my star house, high amongst the peaks of my own true belief. Through declarations flowing from the sovereignty of peace, through the clear and present affirmation that the universe is inalienably mine to reach through this connectivity of all my soul to keep, through the envisioning of a sanctuary deep within my truth, I have climbed to find my star house high amongst the peaks of a bright and fertile liberty built for innermost use. is a queer love poem uh, all about the uh, bubbly excitement you get when uh, you meet that fine person. <laughs> this is called For the Yeses. Effervescent lessons of pleasure's treasured essence, measured blessings of incandescent vexes, pulsing guesses, transcendent ledges of joy meets joy, dancing upon the nexus, glancing upon the majestic of a wilderness, green for the yeses, heart-wise hexes, dancing upon the nexus, 
Another uh, sexy love poem. This is called The Freeing Blues. The Freeing Blues. Could be called the Free King Blues. But uh, the Freeing Blues. No need in line. I ain't trying. No need in line. I ain't trying to be nobody's fool. No need in lying. I ain't trying to be nobody's fool. But what you got has got me flying with no shoes. <laughs> I've lost all rules and dropped out of school. You got me freeing the blues. You got me. You got me freeing the blues. And I ain't about to let this good thing loose. <laughs> Another poem uh, that uh, reminds me of uh, our dear friend Fern Feather. Uh, can I just hear a shout out of love for Fern? I, I know Fern is here with us and is so happy. I know, I know they're so happy to be here with us. Uh, this poem is called A Wintry Observance of Love. Slain heroes don't quite whisper like cedar trees in the far northern breeze. Slain heroes don't quite anesthetize these icy inequities still dangling from our dreams. Slain heroes never quite warm to the cooperative shiverings of complicity. Slain heroes howl loud and feared. Slain heroes of love don't quite ever, ever disappear. Okay, here's, here's a poem I wrote just the other day uh, when it was really hot and swampy and uh, there were clouds threatening to rain, but they just hung over like forever and it was 900% humidity. <laughs> And I was like laying in my sweat, waking up at like three in the morning, five in the morning. And suddenly this poem hit me. And this poem is called, It's Stag Season. <laughs> it's stag season, which is no euphemism for sexy singles. Stag, short for stagnation season, is that swarmiest time during the summer when impending rainstorms loom at their heaviest threat, promising an Amazonian deluge fit for atmospheric change. Yet until such expecting occurrence, stag season can hang in midair for days into weeks, leveraging a stillness of abject humidity, an abominable hesitancy, rendering an eternity 
of sweat maddening hours, of no seen relief, no noon or evening sleep. It's just stag season till the good cloud deigns to weep. Thank you. And this is another recent poem. Um, uh, um, yeah, I think the poem will speak for itself. This is called This Silent Scramble. Meeting your white friend's parents is always a cultural endeavor. <laughs> especially when your white friends insist on being more clueless than their parents. It becomes such a silent scramble to then pirouette between flying daggers and trenching rounds of automatic denials, while I, blackening, blackening, blackening for my life, am guessing who's not coming for dinner, never to be seen again. Yeah, I don't know if any of you have met your white friend's parents. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, so this next one is called The Othering Blues. In the human context, to be misspecied is to be identified as being of some perceived species, which is thought to be less than what is known as the human species. In any given, any given, any given interaction with what I know to be humanity, I am misspecied every time I step within view. Perhaps this happens to you too. When humanity, humanity fails to see its own hue. Yeah, when I first moved to Vermont, uh, after I got settled into my apartment, it was a nice day in spring, and I decided to just walk around the neighborhood and check things out. And I ran into this guy that was mowing his lawn, who was friendly. And we were just kind of chit-chatting, and then he said, just kind of out of the blue, he said, you know, black people are a different species. And he said, y you know what I mean? <laughs> and so that's when I realized, like, there are people that actually, like, miss species. People. Uh, go figure. Uh, this next poem, definitely a reflection of our latest round of massacres, shootings, uh, is just a short piece called Systemic Reasoning. A system that allows for murder is not a system that allows for safety. That's a short little piece there. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> thank you, everyone, for staying out in the rain. I love this. 
I love seeing badminton played in the rain. We don't stop, okay? <laughs> right. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Uh, this piece is called Blues Jean-Michel Basquiat. And right now there's an amazing new exhibition of Jean-Michel Basquiat's work in, in Manhattan, in the gallery there. And uh, Basquiat was a contemporary of mine and an idol of mine uh, when I was in my 20s and I still loved him. And uh, this poem was t is inspired by his work. Uh, I love the way that just automatically just dropped down. Okay, so this is called Blue Jean-Michel Basquiat. I know why, I know why, I know why, I know why, I know why the caged bird bit the hand he was dealt. I know why, I know why. The caged bird, the caged bird bit the hand he was dealt and flew the fuck away. I know why, I know why, I know why the caged bird said, fuck this shit and chewed that lock to bits. I know why the caged bird does not dream of his captor's yield. Birds flying high, bird flying high, I know how you feel, I know how you feel. And I'm so glad that we have all gotten out of our cages and are here today celebrating our queer pride. Love it. Hey. All right. Okay. This is a piece I wrote in 1995. That was about 400 years ago. Um, inspired by just uh, the history of um, the African diaspora. It's called Elysian Time Bump. Ethnophonic, ethnophonic, po folks, ethnophonic, po folks, po folks, poor, Ethnophonic, ethnophonic, po folks bumping, bomb blasting repertoires of B flat and conjure, bumping, snake fingered tempos into calisthenic wah wahs, bumping, emancipated jelly rolls of clarinet and grandeur, bumping, bumping. Bumping, high and mighty high, gree gree, gone crazy. Bumping, bumping, bumping. Casting neck bone elations, neck bone elations. Bumping, making elysian spells out of old born banjos and whole note Haitians. Bumping, bumping, bumping opening windows onto haywire boogaloos, bumping, clashing voices, bumping, clashing voices, bumping, clashing voices with the stomping of some heavy storm, bumping, bumping, walking into birdland, bumping, walking into birdland in the key of Congo Square, bumping, bumping, feeling mighty fine, Feeling mighty fine, feeling mighty fine, bumping. Feeling mighty fine, bumping. Feeling mighty fine, feeling mighty fine, bumping. Ethnophonic, 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 po folks, po folks, bumping, bumping, bumping. Walking Joplin, walking Joplin, walking Joplin to the freedom sign. Bumping. 
This is a poem I called Strange Cones, um, kind of my Vermont tribute to Billy's, Billy Holiday's classic Strange Fruit. And I wrote this uh, last September uh, as I was hearing the oncoming uh, machine guns preparing for hunting season, machine guns. I love this time in Vermont when the gunfire sounds like Philadelphia or Oakland or Chicago or wherever the police steadily serve and protect. Pop, 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 pop. I love this time in Vermont when Bernie and Trump voters alike can join arms in full triggering fervor. Pop, 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 pop. The way the telltale red starts to bleed across the maples amid the strange cones of northern fragility as the white hooded warblers prepare their rightful journey south. I love this time in Vermont. Pop, 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 pop. Such a lovely autumnal affair. And to totally, uh, to totally uh, kind of switch moods here, uh, this is a poem I'm going to do that I wrote for my mother, uh, who recently recovered from uh, kidney failure. Uh, but she's doing really well right now. And I wrote this poem for her Mother's Day 2020. And it's called Just One Bowl of Love. My mother, having raised an entire revolution, my mother makes a whole loaf of freedom from a bowl of access denied. My mother, takes a spoonful of sugar and a handful of courage and sees to the horizons of boundless generations. With the taste of sweet potato pie and a generous amount of divine seasoning, my mother, has sweetened the courage of every step I take forward. My mother can nourish the consciousness of the entire table from just one bowl of love. My mother makes the world so much more livable, knowing full well I love her more than a mere quarantine of miles can ever tell. I love my mother. Okay, when, um, when COVID first, first hit and everything was locking down, I was so excited. <laughs> I was like, this is it. We're finally seeing the, the great shutdown, the great collapse. Um, 
At the time, I was an unemployed poet, and I suddenly didn't have to feel guilty about it. I could go spend all day in the woods or at home. I loved it, uh, and it inspired this poem. Regardless of whom or whatsoever, I'm done with the system. I'm done with the system. I don't want to work for it, nor with it, nor towards its fabled salvage. I'm done. I'm done. Please note my resignation effective immediately. The system has bound and slowed and measurably penalized every step I've known since birth, as can attest all births prior to my own. All progressions achieved thus far and or forwardly are exclusively the fugitive results of life beyond the grasp of such ill-handed fuckery. I'm done. I am done. I'm done with the system. And regardless of whom or whatsoever sanctions otherwise, without need nor want of said regard, I'm done with the system. Please note my resignation effective immediately. Okay. I'm going to do just a couple more here, and then we're going to have me just kind of give us some more beautiful music, and it's just going to be wonderful. Um, Okay. Right. Uh, th this is an old favorite poem of mine that some of you might have heard me do before, but uh, from 2013. But I love it. Uh, it keeps uh, keeps being important. Uh, it's called All Green Lights. And you know how um, when you're driving down a long stretch and every intersection you get to, it's just one green light after another, all green lights. You can't stop a mountain from standing on your toes. You can't stop the sunrise from Manhattan or Rome. You can't stop the revolution from ringing like bells. And you can't stop me from being myself. You can't stop this message from blooming in the hills. You can't stop this harvest from feeding, feeding who it will. You can't stop this feeling from going below the belt. And you can't stop me from being myself. Not you, not your courts, not your rules, not your hatred, not your history, not your schemes, not your deception, not your collusion, not your collusion, not your lies, 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 not your lies. You can't stop this mountain from seeing all of your storms. You can't stop this sunrise from your gilding of thorns. You can't stop this revolution, this revolution right here, from ringing like bells. 
and you can't stop me from being myself. Thank you. And this last piece I'm going to do, dedicated to the brothers Marlon Riggs and Essex Hemphill, uh, two great poets, uh, black gay poets, uh, who unfortunately uh, both died of AIDS uh, some years ago, but I had uh, a great opportunity to get to know them and uh, to share poetry with them. Uh, if you ever have a chance to see that uh, Marlon Riggs was, in addition to a poet, he was a great uh, uh, documentarian, a filmmaker, and uh, he has a great film called Tongues Untied, I like which I definitely recommend. It's often played on PBS, uh, really deals with black queer life. And uh, so this poem is called Brothers and Brothers. Oh, I love this one. Yes! <laughs> brothers and brothers. Brothers and brothers and brothers. Brothers and brothers and brothers. Brothers and brothers, brothers and brothers. Brothers and brothers, brothers and brothers. Brothers and brothers and brothers and brothers and brothers, brothers and brothers and brothers and brothers in arms of other brothers, in arms of other brothers, brothers in arms of other brothers, brothers and brothers and brothers and brothers and brothers loving brothers, brothers loving brothers in arms of other brothers loving brothers brothers and brothers and brothers and brothers in arms being brothers being lovers being brothers being mothers brothers being mothers brothers being sisters brothers being rescuers, brothers and brothers and brothers, being keepers of brothers in love with other brothers. Brothers, brothers and 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 brothers in arms of other brothers, brothers and brothers, loving brothers, brothers of breath and thunder, brothers of breath. and thunder, holding the one love that cannot be shut asunder. Brothers and brothers, holding the one love that cannot be shut asunder. Brothers of breath and thunder, breath and thunder. Brothers and brothers, breathing life Breathing life, breathing life. Brothers and brothers, loving brothers in arms of other brothers, loving brothers. Breathing life, breathing life, <sighs> breathing life. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, before I pass over the mic, I again want to wish happy pride to all of us. And I especially want to wish happy pride to those of us who aren't amongst us. Those of us who might be uh, on the other side of those hills over there, who might be in homes where they are not welcomed. Uh, people who uh, might be in harm, uh, 
uh, people who have already been harmed, people like us. And I, I wish pride for all of us. Uh, I have been out uh, since I was 19. That was about three years before Moses, even though I'm quite young still now. <laughs> but uh, I am definitely a firm believer in coming out, being out. I, I first learned about outness as an African American, uh, learning that it did no good for me to try to hide my blackness because I am black. And it was, it was a joke on me to try to blend, to try to fit in, to try to talk white, be white, whatever that lunacy is supposed to mean. And so when I came out as queer, as gay, it was like, oh yeah, I already know about this. Yeah, uh, being out is our best defense. Uh, being out is what scares the hatred shitless. Being out is what protects us. Being out is what creates this. Okay, so happy pride to everyone, and let's continue this for the rest of our lives. Thank you, happy pride. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, is Kel in the not building? <laughs> is Kel within range of my voice? There's Kel. Hi, can we all just take a moment to like give Kel a round of applause for organizing all of this? <laughs> we also want to thank Elaine for spearheading this. Where's Elaine? Okay, thank you, Elaine. <laughs> Hello, hello. 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 Can you hear that? Yes. Is it coming through the speakers, the harp, or is it very quiet? No, it's coming through the speakers. It's good? Good. Thank you. I love the harp. I don't think we have enough power. Hi again, how's everyone doing? <laughs> Still doing okay? It's beautiful out, huh? I've had a lot of variation in day. I've had a few bits of rain, some sun. I'm waiting for the snow. Maybe my harp will bring the snow. Um, first of all, my name's Marie Hamilton. My pronouns are she, her. Uh, and I just wanted to say, I am beyond honored to be here playing my hometown's first Pride Festival. I honestly can't believe it's the first one. It, is it just me? But, what? <laughs> but we're here right now, so. Um, yes. I um, only came out publicly two years ago, so it's still new for me to be out. <laughs> and it's amazing, but it, was <laughs> but it was really hard. It was really hard. Um, it was a little bit of wind. I wonder if I should back up. It sounds great. You're good. Is it still okay, yeah. despite the wind? Cool. Um, I went to Catholic school for a few years growing up, and I grew up in a very Irish Catholic family where um, being queer wasn't the most welcomed thing. And being bisexual,
bisexual, I, I identify as bisexual, pansexual, anything that just means gender isn't a barrier for physical and romantic attraction. <laughs> um, I love people. <laughs> but being bisexual, being in a straight passing relationship, being cisgender, there's a lot of privilege in that. But there's also a very specific way of experiencing being queer. Um, the same privilege that I have to move through the world is what kept me from coming out. And sometimes it's hard because bisexual, uh, biphobia is still very much a thing in queer circles. And internalized biphobia is very much a thing. Um, it's hard when you just don't feel like you're enough, you have that imposter syndrome. Um, but I'm so lucky to be surrounded with, by beautiful people in my community and in my friend groups who have made me feel so welcome. And uh, I hope anyone who's here who feels like they're not welcome here, like they don't belong here, can find one day that feeling because you are welcome here. Everyone's welcome. Anyhow, uh, I'm gonna start with a song by a Canadian musician named Ray Spoon. I don't know if anyone here knows Ray Spoon. Does anyone know Ray Spoon? Amazing, <laughs> you are now going to know Ray Spoon. <laughs> they are a non-binary musician from Canada. They've been dealing with cancer for many years now and have been an incredible advocate for moving through the medical system as a non-binary person, which is not easy. Um, and I highly suggest you check out their music. They're amazing. I learned this song this morning on my way, on my drive down here, so I'm very, feeling very vulnerable sharing it, but if it explodes, you'll know why. <laughs>
what the heck to do. Hurting other people is not part of the deal, so say. So this is so fun. What a fun time. I love this. I love seeing all the young people. If some of you just arrived earlier, there was a dance party here. They were doing the Macarena. It was, uh, it's so fun. Like, I wish we had this when I was in high school here in Montpelier. It would have helped me figure out a few more things a little earlier. <laughs> But how great, how great we are here. Um, yeah, the next song is actually another song uh, by a friend of a friend named Dina Vollmer. Dina is an amazing journalist, musician, writer. She was in a band called the Pizza Underground, <laughs> which as you may guess, was a pizza-themed Velvet Underground tribute band <laughs> with Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> Anyhow, it's a beautiful, beautiful song. Uh, it moved me so much the first time I heard it, and it moves me so much, you know, today. Um, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the context in which I finally learned this song. Um, I just want to give you a little heads up that I'm going to talk a little bit about transphobia in, um, in the medical system. Uh, so if that's sensitive, I just want you to take care of yourself. And I'm going to move back one second. <laughs> this wind is a bit much. that'll do anything <laughs> for it. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to give that little heads up that I'm going to talk about that. Um, so I had a friend named Hayden who was one of the best people in the entire fucking world. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> in the world. Um, and they uh, had a heart bigger than their body. Um, they would make these little hearts out of just like paper and collages and go to the metro. They lived in Montreal. They would go to the metro and give them out to people um, on Valentine's Day, especially people who looked lonely. Um, and uh, they just, they were the best. And I, I'm certain you all would have loved them. Um, a few years ago, Hayden finally got uh, a cancer diagnosis. Um, but it was after years and years of them going to their doctor 
and insisting that something wasn't right with them. Knowing, knowing in their body, and they weren't believed. They were told time and time again that it was anxiety. It was anxiety, anxiety, that's all it is. It's nothing, it's just anxiety. And then when they finally found out what it was, which was breast cancer, not anxiety, um, it was too late. And I know in my heart, I know in my being that if they had believed them when they first started having those concerns, that they'd still be here today. And I'm certain that the doctor saw my friend Hayden and their trans identity as a symptom of mental illness. And I mean, it's a side point, but the way we treat mental illness, just anxiety, just mental illness is totally wrong. Like mental illness really is an important thing to consider. And, but that connection of like, oh, you're just, your mind is all messed up because you're trans or whatever. Like I'm certain that's what the doctor was thinking as they uh, shrugged off their concerns. And, uh, and of course, you know, I brought them to a lot of their medical appointments and they're constantly dead named, they're constantly misgendered. And when you're dying, when you're navigating something as awful as breast cancer, you shouldn't have to deal with that. No, no one should have to deal with that e ever, ever, but especially in, in a moment like that. Um, so, when, when Hayden passed, I was there, and it was the first time that I was in the room with someone while they left their body. And um, there's something about death that brings you very close to life. I don't know if people here have experienced that, but I, I just actually played in a palliative care center yesterday for another friend who is uh, on the edge of losing their life to cancer. Um, and so I'm like very actively right now in that space of just being very alive and very close to life. And, um, and Hayden's death, it, it just makes all, uh, all the things that don't matter just fall away. And what was, what's pure and true about just existing just comes to the forefront. And um, this song, uh, over the course of the weeks, in, in the wake of Hayden's passing, I learned it, because I knew they would have loved it. It's totally their style of music. But the words, as you'll hear, came to be a form of medicine for me. Um, and uh, yeah, you'll see why. But I just wanted to dedicate this song to Hayden, Hayden Mueller, who's shining there up in the sky. I also want to dedicate this to Fern Feather, who I also knew. I, I'm sorry, I'm talking so much, but one last story. I have so many beautiful memories of Fern. Um, like even here, I, I remember one time I was on the State House lawn. This happened many times. Um, but I like heard, Marie, Marie, and I turned, and Fern had like stopped her car in the middle of State Street, <laughs> got out, left the door open, like just in the middle of the street, runs up to me and is like, look at this like beautiful stone. Can't you see the, the universe in it? It's so beautiful. And, and gave it to me, kissed me on the cheek, and then was gone. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so. Sending love to both of them, and this song is dedicated to them and dedicated to any of your loved ones who have left too early. It looked like the end of the world, but it was 
it's just the end of the day and when the sun went down the park guards told us that we had to go and i groaned but it's perfect here my friend said nah it's time to go and it seemed strangely like a sagely thing to say so we walked back to my house to listen to the grateful dead he had never heard the dead before because they were for white people he said but on that day he understood why the grateful dead are actually good and i like hippie jam band music from the time that i was 12 but it was years before i heard the dead because i thought they were death metal and why would a hippie band have a name like that but as i became a fan the words lost their meaning do you hear the harp in the wind? Yeah. That's magic, huh? I'm just gonna let that go for a second. Woo! Uh, where was I? You're right here. What, uh, we walk back to my, no, we listen. Uh, so we walk back. <laughs> on that day he understood why the grateful dead are actually good and i like hippie jam band music from the time that i was 12 but it was years before i heard the dead because i thought they were death metal and why would a hippie band have a name like that but as i became a fan the words lost their meaning Can the dead be grateful? Well, I think that they're great still, but I don't like the name. There was the time we went to Coney Island, summer in the middle of the night, and as we walked to the beach, the guard dogs hurled their bodies at the chain link fences. Did we dance or did we swim? Our hands slipped for the sand, and at the time we think there were to make now a transpose later ones on top by mistake We're swimming in the spotlight moving like reptiles on the moon We're walking the orange lit streets mischievous as a gaggle of goons i'm zooming out i'm standing at the pier water is hundreds of giant stone bodies they are swimming and they are the water 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 and my english teacher once told me the books are about sex and death only and i used to think that love would be my greatest persuadive would be the thing to bring me closer to the truth but now i've found death's mysterious shroud at the forefront of my thinking with love just a shield to protect us a grand understanding of music literature and art it's about getting closer to the feeling of opening your own heart when my friend Felt that way again. Open and sensitive and free from all that BS. <laughs> I'm trying to censor.
but yes, I felt sad, but so loving, so much closer to the truth. And each day I felt it just a little less than the day before. And I mourn the loss of that feeling as I mourn my friend. It was time to get back to the living, to be an engine in the city again. And I want to capture that open feeling and give it out to anyone feeling cold and closed and blue. But I am not yet a master. I'm only just learning so I consume music and art. And I know when it's good because it brings me closer to the water and it's dripping, dripping from the clouds. Leave it if you need it, if you don't just pass it on. I'm zooming out, I'm standing at the pier. Waters, hundreds of giant stone bodies, they are swimming, and they are the water. 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 Do you want to sing with me? Yes? I, this, sing with me, ready? They are swimming and they are the water. You got it? Thumbs up if you got it. Oh my god, that was cute. Okay, one, two, three, four. They are swimming and they are the water. 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 They are swimming. It's a bunch of love. Oh my goodness. It's time for more, more people to play and for me to stop playing. Um, but uh, my name is Marie Hamilton. If you like my music, I'm on Instagram, Marie Hamilton Music. I'm also very nice, believe it or not. So if you want to say hi, <laughs> come say hi. I don't bite unless there's consent. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to make the most like bleh. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for holding some space for me today. Marie Hamilton. I love the Montpelier locals coming back to roost. Uh, Marie's incredible. They live part-time in Montreal, but sometimes they're down here in Vermont still. Um, so we're going to flip the sound, and we have a closing group. Uh, such a sweet uh, closing, and for us, it's the Mount Abe a cappella group, Sweet Transition. And... There are other happenings for people that uh, want to go to bars from 4 to 8. There's a Charlie O's Queer Takeover. There's a Fox Market Dance Party tonight. Tomorrow, there's a ton of events. There's an all-day film fest at the Savoy. There's Shakes Queer in the Park in Hubbard. And there's also a 4 o'clock Bar Hill closing party tomorrow. And then on Tuesday night, the Savoy is going to do another evening queer film. So awesome happenings. We're definitely going to do more LGBTQ plus stuff in Montpelier. So I'm going to transition this out for them. Thanks so much for coming out. Hello. So we are Sweet Transition. We are a high school a cappella group based at Mount Abraham Union High School in Bristol, Vermont. Backing up here. Um, and we're going to sing a few songs for you today. So I hope you enjoy. All right. 
Sorry about that, guys. We are now ready. Yay. soloist will be Bella and Elena.
take two.
Before we do that, we just wanted to take a moment to introduce ourselves and ask any of you out there listening a quick favor. So again, we are Sweet Transition, um, a high school acapella group, and right now we're in the midst of a competition that is being held by Do Good Fest, which will take place here on July 16th. And that competition is called Beats for Good. And right now we're one of like the top 10 selected finalists, um, and we're in the voting. <laughs> Thank you. And we're in the voting round of that. So there, there's 10 groups, and whichever one gets the most votes gets to perform at this Do Good Festival um, and open for ex ambassadors. So we would really like to win that. <laughs> um, so if you have a moment, um, if you could go to dogoodfest.com and vote for Sweet Transition, that would be much appreciated. We also have a QR code right up here if you feel inclined to come near us. <laughs> and yeah, that, that would be great. And lastly, we just want to thank our friends at the Pride Center for inviting us and giving us this great opportunity. And so yeah, we have one more song for you all. It's called Colors by the Black Pumas and our soloist will be Bella. Thank you so much.
sisters and my brothers see them like no other all my favorite Thank you so much, Sweet Transition, and everybody from Montpelier Pride. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.